Yeah. All right. Let's talk about what it's actually been like to sail this boat and to experience sailing a catamaran for the first time. All right, it's the only other time we've sailed catamarans has been in very, very calm, protected waters. We did, um, well, we actually sailed a lagoon 400 a couple of years ago in the Med. Yep. That was a bit bouncy. If I can find the video, I'll have to go back a couple of years. I'll link to it up there. And then we did a um, 1260 test sail, but the conditions again were very, very mild yep and we also did the same thing on a leopard 1145 yeah. and then we did a little bit of sailing with nikki and jason as well in yep. um french polynesia and again i'll link to that series up there all right let me point let me point out a couple of takeaways and i'm not sure whether this is because i have we have got off a monohull and haven't been sailing for a while and now get into a catamaran or whether there's something different about this this is the first catamaran i've been on i didn't feel sick yes i agree because I remember, I have a distinct recollection, and I have a very strong stomach, of feeling pretty queasy when we went on the Lagoon 400. The conditions were a bit bouncy. And I also remember sailing from Tahiti to Morea on Curiosity. And I would say the conditions are pretty mild, but there was a bit of ocean swell. I remember feeling a bit queasy that day too. Okay. So you can answer below, is it psychosomatic, wishful thinking, mm. is it the fact that we've got off the boat, or is there something about certain catamarans that make you feel more nauseous than others? No idea about that one, and I'm not accrediting that to it being this cat. Well, I think Seawind would probably say Oh, the Seawind would be right, it's a nausea free cat, <laughs> it's a nausea free cat, sea sickness banished. Point two, zero creeks. Yeah. There's not a single creak out of this boat. No. Um, Barely makes a sound. Yeah, it's quiet. There's that. And did you hear it slam at all? I heard it slam once when I was up there, and it was actually when we were coming in, I think, to okay. um, to this 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 big big bay, and it was so out of the blue that I thought, what the heck was that? We might, maybe we actually hit something in the water. I don't know. So, but anyway, there's zero creaks. Zero creaks. It didn't slam once. Apart from just that one time, and that was like a weird thing. Yeah, um, yeah. which I would expect it to, because the boat, this boat, I mean, th you know, thanks to, to, to Phil for, for you know giving us use of his boat, it, there is a lot of kit on this boat, and it sits quite low in the waterline, which apparently does lend itself to slamming. Yeah, that's right. But so pretty impressed with that. Um, obviously, she does not point as high as Ruby Rose does. Did, does, did, does. <laughs> Like, I was just... <laughs> kind of so basically, angry. she was laughing about 45. So you were starting to get laugh about 45 degrees of pound. The other thing that I noticed was that, particularly when we first put the sails up and we were struggling to get them filled because the winds were so light, I felt a real disconnect between what we were doing and the sails. This is just the nature of the catamaran sailing, I guess, but when you're in a monohull, you, the sails are right in your face. You have to be kind of paying them attention all the time. But here, it's so easy to kind of not really think about them so much because you can't see them. You can see your, four, your head sail, I think that's a jib. It's a jib that we've got. But to see the main, you have to actually go out of your way. You have to like go out and crane your neck around or go forward to the yeah. windows. So the, yeah, there is a disconnect and it does look good. We're not, we're not breaking any new ground here because mm -hmm. this has all been discussed before. Mm. The other thing I would say about this, and I think this is like my overwhelming, I said this to you today off camera, everything is pretty bloody easy. It feels like you're cheating. Yeah. Like everything is so much easier than selling one home. I know. It really is. I don't know. You feel like you're cheating. Yeah, exactly. Everything's easy. Everything is just, it's just done at the touch of a button. You, I mean, well, we, we look. We had electronic. Win we had electric winches on our old, old boat. But I know, but I still feel like there were so many things that was like a two-person job on Ruby Rose. It's all for us, kind of slightly new, um, very exciting, and I feel that we're learning, you know, a lot.
Good morning, everyone. How absolutely beautiful. Crazy, right? After the weather yesterday, not a cloud in the sky, and it is cold. It is really cold. My feet are like they're bare at the moment and they're like going slowly numb. We've got the heating on inside. It's lovely and cozy inside. But what a spectacularly beautiful morning. We're heading back into Sydney Harbour and this will be the last kind of proper day that we have on board. Tomorrow we are taking the boat back. <laughs> About Australia, is that it gets cold? <laughs> <laughs> I do try and remind you. I know you, you try and remind me that I've just got some mental block about Australia ever being cold. Yeah, and it does, it does you, happen. You tell me every year to bring jumpers, um, and when we got on this boat, I'm like, why is there a heating system? Honestly, this morning I was kind of huddling around the heater like a Dickensian villain, rubbing his hands and trying to get some heat into me, and damn. Um, <clears throat> it yeah, rained kind of. torrentially yesterday. Yeah. I think it must have rained for 24 hours straight and at times um, you know it was it was bucketing down. As a just as an you know an, as an example, I put the I opened the dinghy drain about oh, 10 yeah. minutes ago and it's still peeing out and making me want to pee because I can hear it tinkling away as the rain passes so the sun comes out. And yeah, I like some sort of middle-aged gecko. I'm uh, trying to absorb the sun's rays to warm myself up. In a minute, my tongue's gonna shoot out. It'll lick one of my eyeballs. <laughs> I just walked into like a little sun patch for my feet and it uh, feels really nice. In the sunlight, you can see this hair. Ah! <laughs> I can't yeah, get it. Just got to. You, have to, you have to get it yourself. Your evolutionary mechanism has ever been one hair there. Like, at what point? It may have gone. Hang on, let me see. I think it's gone. Alright, then. Well, nice right. runs over and it. So in typical fashion, we are like 45 minutes early for the bridge. Somehow we always seem to be super, super early or like running extremely late. There's no kind of middle ground there. Um, could I just have the Melbourne breakfast, please? So we'll just enjoy the sunshine, have a cup of tea, enjoy the view, look at all these lovely, big, expensive houses and wait for the bridge to open. So we're at the bridge. We are about 17 minutes early. Uh, there's about two other boats here. Yeah, we got like 12 knots of wind just pushing us <laughs> towards the bridge. <laughs> and I'm trying to keep the boat still. You're doing a very good job of keeping the boat still. Well, I'm not actually. I'm, apparently, I'm doing nothing through the water, but over ground, I'm doing one knot. Uh, point two of a knot. And our helm is over there. So that's the boat we're trying to not hit. Can you hear that? Yeah. That was kind of it's interesting. It's a bit hairy. No one's, everyone's like doing like two knots and playing silly buggers with their tenders. Cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. The Australian Navy uh, sending out, I think it's a helicopter carrier. Yeah, well, that's about as close as I ever want to get to one of those, I reckon. I think under uh, certain maritime laws, you're not meant to get within 500 meters of them. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit hard in Sydney Harbour. Someone will comment below. I know with the US, I know with the US Navy, you can't get within 500 yards, I think. Okay, hey, we need to decide where to anchor. Slight conundrum. The wind is um, stronger than I expected. What are, what are we at, about 23 knots? 15 feet, 20 apparently. Now it's, okay. Okay, so 15 knots, it was 20 before um, as we're coming through or past the, the cut. We would like to anchor uh, kind of in a place called Athol Bay, which gives fantastic views of Sydney and the Opera House and the, the bridge, but that's going to be exposed to the wind, no protection from the wind. I'm not sure how that's going to play out. I think we'll go there, check it out, see what it's like, and then um, if it's too bouncy, then we'll have to move to the other side of Sydney Harbour. We'll see how we go. Do you want to pick the boy up this time? Whew. Made it. Feeling a bit wind swept. Um, picking up that boy was not the easiest. We couldn't film it because our, um, our Hero 360, Insta 360, sorry, ran out of battery. This is a new camera. We're still kind of working out how long the battery lasts. Not that long, I don't think. We're pretty close to the shore, so there wasn't much room to maneuver, but we did it. You know, I have to say, this is why being on catamaran is so fantastic. I guess if you were like in a heavy, big, heavy monohull, it would probably be similar. Like there's a quite a bit of chop here because you know, there's a lot of fetch where half a mile maybe of um maybe a mile i'm not very good at judging distances of um of fetch and honestly doesn't make any major difference at all to the movement of the boat and you know the payoff is that we get this amazing view of sydney right in front of the boat
have this entire beach all to ourselves. I think it's fair to say that this is one of the most beautiful places that we've been to in, uh, in Australia. It's so beautiful. 